Hello. In this unit, we're going to continue the discussion of egoism, first continuing with uh, looking at arguments for descriptive egoism, and then a little bit of time with ethical egoism at the end. And with descriptive egoism, we'll be continuing to look at the wants argument for descriptive egoism and whether or not the descriptive egoist can really make that argument work. In this short video, I'm just going to want to give a little bit of new terminology, review where we've been, and set up where we're going in the rest of this unit. So, quickly, uh, we've been talking about egoism and altruism. Um, so, remember that an egoistic action, that's the action that most benefits the self. An altruistic action, that's the action that most benefits everybody. And those are sometimes the same. Sometimes what most benefits me will be what most benefits everybody else and vice versa but not always, so we can say that a purely egoistic action is an action that most benefits the self and it does not most benefit everybody. So it's when, when you do that, then you're benefiting yourself the most, but other people aren't as well off as they could be. And similarly, a purely altruistic action would be an action that most benefits everybody overall, but does not most, most benefit you, the person doing the action. And so then egoism is that you intend to do whatever ben most men benefits the self. So you always do the egoistic action, but in particular, you'll do uh, purely egoistic actions. Altruism, you intend to do whatever most benefits everybody. So you always do the altruistic action, but specifically, you'll do the purely altruistic action, the one that most benefits everybody, even if it doesn't most benefit yourself. Okay, good. So that those purely terms, I think, will help and make the discussion a little bit simpler. So descriptive egoism is a claim about how things are. It says that each person is an egoist, that they intend to do whatever will most benefit them. So they do every purely, they, they do egoist actions, and in particular, they'll do every purely egoist action. And when they do an altruistic action, it's incidental. They do the altruistic actions only because they're egoistic also. And this is about what people actually do. It's not about what they should do. But it does have ethical implications because if it's true, then probably there are no altruist. There's no duty to do the altruistic thing because uh, ethics is a guide that tells you among the things that you could do, which ones you should do, and um, you're never capable of sacrificing. If descriptive egoism is true, you're never capable of sacrificing yourself in any way or your self-interest for others' interests, and so there wouldn't be any altruistic ethical duties. So we saw this wants argument for descriptive egoism. The first premise is you always do what you most want to do. The second premise is you always most want to do what you believe is in your self-interest. And the conclusion is that you always act selfishly, doing what you believe is in your self-interest. Is this sound? Well, it's valid. And if we interpret want as meaning motivated, then uh, the first premise is true. And we've been looking at the second premise. And we saw uh, two defenses of, the, of premise two that we have apparently altruistic motivations, but that, uh, according to the descriptive egoist, these are only disguised. They're actually motivations to do what's best for us, but they lead us to sometimes do what is also best for others. So one part of this was that doing the altruistic action can give us, can give the person doing the action good moral feelings and avoid bad moral feelings. We discussed that in the previous unit. Or module and then the second and what will be focused on in this unit is that there are social benefits of that I benefit that the, the person the egoist benefits uh, for social reasons from doing the altruistic action and so we don't perform purely altruistic actions says the descriptive egoist every altruistic action we actually perform is e also egoistic and if you do the act that most benefits everybody, that is because it most benefits you because of the moral feelings and because of the benefits you get, uh, the social benefits that you get. So the just to briefly preview the second defense of premise two, actual altruistic actions are egoistic because they preserve good social standing. And to understand that, that good social standing is actually very important to understand why we'll be looking at the idea of a social contract and of the prisoner's dilemma, and of how those two interact, and of how cheating uh, the social contract works, and how your reputation works to keep you in the social contract. So that's what we'll be looking at in the coming videos, so let's get to them.